if we're talking about a trans woman has all of the male f physical characteristics, so would that not be a male then? Couldn't, couldn't we plainly say this person is a male. Well, wh well I guess it's, it's like, wh why are you asking the question? I think I, I, wa I want to understand sort of why that's so important. So if someone tells Just you... Just to, to sort of understand reality, you know? Well, I mean, I think when someone tells you who they are, you should believe them. So if a person says that they're a woman or they're a man, then that's them telling you their gender is. I'm, I'm not so sure why, what social... Um, in interactions would have to do with with maleness or femaleness that would be well I mean I could think of a few uh, you know one I want to have sex with you or not um, uh, you know I'm treating you as your doctor um, those are two social interactions that where would be relevant what the genitalia that the person has uh, are uh, at least for most of us I think they are relevant I but notice how he's trying to completely evade and ignore the biological aspects. It's as if biology doesn't matter. They, they're telling you they're a female. That's enough. Most people don't lie. What's enough is what they tell you. What's enough is what they feel. What's enough is what they, they emote. Facts, reality, biology. Seems, at least here, to this guy, completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. I'm not even talking about social context. I'm just, I'm just trying to start by getting to the truth, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm really uncomfortable with that language of like g getting to the truth again in social why, why life. Is that, why is that uncomfortable? In, he's uncomfortable with getting to the truth. Now, again, I don't know what happened before. If, if he got the sense that Matt is trying to push him, in. I mean, hopefully he did some research on Matt before he did the interview, but it doesn't look like he did any given the interaction, but um, truth, facts, reality, biology, don't seem to interest him. Comfortable. Because that, it sounds actually deeply transphobic to me. Um, and and truth? You, and transphobic. I mean, notice, what does phobia mean? What does phobia mean? Right? Phobia means afraid of. So is... Uh, Somebody asking for the truth um, mean that they're afraid of homosexuals? Um, how do you, I mean, whenever you accuse somebody of a phobia, you're telling them that they're afraid of the thing that you, you're saying they're afraid of. Homophobia, they're afraid of homosexuals. Are they? I mean, they might, there might be a lot of people who, who unjustly, um, uh, you know, uh, um, I don't know, demean homosexuals, unjustly treat homosexuality. But does that make them afraid of it? The, the, the whole lashing out with phobias, transphobia, homophobia, uh, Islamophobia, uh, all these things, as if there's nothing to talk about on these issues, there's nothing to discuss. It's immediately, well, you're a, you, 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 you're a bad person because you're expressing this fear, which, which isn't weird, the whole thing is, a, is it's, a, it's a weird way of analyzing the problem, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure this professor would say if somebody else, if they were talking about a different topic and somebody said, I want to get to the truth of this, he'd say, oh, well, truth is homophobic. It's the context, and again, I don't know what the context was before we started showing this view, but it is kind of, it, this is spooky. This is spooky stuff when the response to, I'm just trying to get to the truth about gender about what gender means is what well, you're a homophobe doesn't seem too very intellectual does it i mean this guy is a and, and if you keep probing we're going to stop the interview i if i probe about what the truth is you keep invoking the word truth which is condescending and rude how is how is truth condescending and rude How's asking somebody what they think the truth is about something condescending and rude? It's a complete rejection of reality. It's a rejection of the idea of fact. It's a rejection of reason. It's, at the end of the day, what matters are the emotions of people. What matters are how people feel. And that's what I think 
this whole trans movement is about. It's about the elevation of emotions above all things, and it's about the destruction of reason, fact, biology, truth, reality. And again, this is not to say every trans person is this way, not at all. You know, the fact that you're a trans person doesn't need, mean you need to buy into this particular philosophy. Um, certainly, for example, I don't think Deirdre does. But this is what the intellectuals behind it are pushing. This is what the movement is pushing. And it's a nihilistic movement because the goal is not the elevation of no sex. The goal is the destruction of sex, the destruction of male and female, the destruction of sex. It's the negation. And it's, you know, you, you see the nihilism in the open hostility to the truth, to the concept of truth, not to the truth. I'm saying how to is, you, how is the word truth condescending and rude? Why don't you tell me what your truth is and you're walking on 30 seconds more of the nights before I get up. What my truth is? Well, I don't think I really have a truth. I think that there's just the truth, like the reality. And so we should begin by trying to figure out what the reality is. Uh-huh. And why are you concerned with when someone else tells you that they're a man, or even if they use the word male, why are you concerned with not believing them? Well, you keep bringing it back. Well, this is why I think Matt is, is, is weak, right? He could say, well, I'm a doctor and I want to know, or I want to have sex. You know, I want to know if there's a possibility of sex here. I, you know, I want to know what league in sports to put them in. There were a lot of reasons why you would want to know, and he could give some of those, right? And uh, I, I'd be curious what the professor would have said in those circumstances. So, you know, how do you respond in a social situation? But, That's what I do. I'm a social scientist. Well, right. But we're in a university. This is a place of understanding truth, isn't it? Or Absolutely. We, are, we pursue truth, is, truth and so I'm a social scientist and that's what I but do. you just said the truth is transphobic. Th that you would say, that you're, if you're saying the truth is that I get to say, you're not a man, show me your genitalia, that's transphobic. No, no, yeah. I don't want to see anybody's genitalia. I, I, I just mean someone can make a statement about themselves that could be untrue. Like, for example, if I, if I were to say that I'm a black man, could you... Would you accept that or would you be skeptical? Are you black? Are you African-American? Are you biracial? I don't think so. Yeah, well, you don't look that and I don't think that's a, it doesn't sound like that's a genuine statement of who you are. Okay, so that's my point. I, I could make a statement about who I am that's incorrect. Of course, I think it's well established that human beings can lie, yes. Or not even lie. I mean, I could just be mistaken. Yeah. I'm uh, not sure where you're going. I guess this all comes back, just, this all comes down to really one question. Um, especially women, gender, and sexuality studies. So, so what, what is a woman? Why do you ask that question? I just really like to know. What do you think the answer to that question is? Well, I'm, I'm asking. That's why I came to a college professor who, who's, Notice this is, your, this is what you do. doesn't want to answer this question. What other kinds of answers have you gotten? A lot of like this, where you're where you're not answering, and I've gotten a lot of that. So I think it's interesting that you that you say that some of the people you've you've um, interviewed have been um, reluctant to answer it, and I think that has a lot to do with the way the questions that preceded it and the the way that you've conducted yourself in the interview. How have I conducted myself? How do you think you've conducted yourself? <laughs> well, this is partially. I'm curious what happened before the interview that we've seen. You just really don't want to answer the questions, do you? I, I came today very willing and, and enthusiastic about answering questions about women's and gender sexuality studies, which is so the you wanted that to, I do. You wanted to answer questions about women's studies, and so shouldn't the, the first 
answer you should be able to provide is what exactly is a woman? Well, it's it, for me, it's it's actually a really simple answer, and that's a person who identifies as a woman. But what are they identifying as? As a woman. I but but what is that? As a woman. Do you know what a circular definition is? I do. <laughs> it's, it's sort of like what you're doing right now, where a, a woman is, is a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, because you're seeking what we would call in my field of work an essentialist definition of gender. I think it sounds like you would like me to give you a set of biological or cultural characteristics that are associated with one gender or the other. I'm not seeking any type of definition. I'm just seeking a definition. Yeah, and I gave you one. Yeah, I mean, a, a woman is somebody who identifies as a woman. That's a definition. That's what constitutes the definition. I mean, that's absurd, ridiculous, stupid. Um, and and I, now there are other interviews that are, that are even worse in some sense. There, there's some really horrible people that he's interviewed. Uh, but that's a college professor. College professor. Um, you know, and the problem with the, def the various definitions that they provide, I've, I've, I've looked here at definitions that they've, uh, you know, if, if, you know, gender of, of gender identity and what it means and, uh, and, and what it means, uh, what how people define women. And it's, it all falls down to this circular, it almost always becomes this circular definition. Because one of the things they don't want to do, one of the things they clearly don't want to do is they don't want to provide a biological definition, because that's problematic for them. But then they also don't want to define a psychological. So I feel like a woman. Well, what is feeling like a woman? What is that like? Well, does it mean that you're um, submissive and, uh, I don't know, passive, and you like dresses, and you're, wait a minute, but now you're stereotyping women. You, you, you're associating all kind of psychological attributes to women that we don't like. Well, but then tell me, what does it feel to feel like a woman that is not that way? And I keep reading the stuff, and they won't actually say it. They won't actually say it. This is why, by the way, there's quite a bit of feminists who are anti this trans movement, because... Feminists have spent a lot of time trying to say uh, women are not that different from men. You know, the better feminists don't say they're completely the same, but intellectually we're not different. In many ways, we're not different from men. We can do much of what men can do. Uh, and, you know, we, we're focused on, we've been focused on getting rid of all the stereotypes that are associated with being a woman. And now you're telling us, and, and we've been saying these differences are not significant. Now you're saying they are significant, they're huge, they're big, psychological, because they're not physiological, they're psychological. They're how you feel, like your identity as, your, which is your feeling. And this is, this is the conflict, right? So, um, you know, then there's uh, somebody on the chat, Lowe Low said, you know, uh, uh, people base their evaluation of somebody as a woman or man based on their appearance. Um, so Lowe says, Low says here in the, in the uh, super chat, he says, a woman is a social category associated with but not essentially caused by having female anatomy. But it clearly is not. Because a woman is somebody with feeling uh, with a female anatomy. It's not a social category. I don't know what a social category even means. A woman is a concept. It's a it's a it's a it's a word that stands for a particular category in reality. It's not a social creation. It's not a myth uh, that that is just subjectively associated with something. It, it is dependent on and has, you know, real evolutionary importance because of reproduction. Women can have babies. 
Men cannot. That's huge. That's a big, big difference. And I think a big difference that manifests itself psychologically as well. But that's a big difference. That's not a social category. That's not a made-up thing. It's not an arbitrary thing. Now, so uh, woman is a social category associated with, but not essentially caused by having female genitalia. But that's not a definition, because even there, what is it? A social category of what? Of a way you dress and a way you behave and a way you emote. What is it? What, what, what is the thing that the category is associated with? Outward appearance? That's it? That's all that they care about? No, it can't be just outward appearance. Because Again, there's this idea of gender identity. I'm identifying with a particular agenda. That's not associated with just my outward appearance. That's associated with something deep in my psyche. So even your definition, Lo, is, is not a definition because it's leaving out the characteristic that make one, that, that define the social category. And you see, this is the thing. They don't want to define it. It scares them to define it. Because by defining, what are you doing when you define something? You delimit it. And modern epistemology refuses to do that. Lowe says, categories don't exist in the world. We define them based on utility. We define them based on utility, but based on actual existence, actual reality, actual features that exist in reality. And that's why they have utility. The reason they have utility is because they exist in reality. And utility means our ability to deal with reality. So again, the utility of sex, the utility of, of biological sex is reproduction, is sex. It's medical treatment. I have to have a category of women and men to be able to deal with those. I mean, there, there are many other reasons one has to have this category, but that's one. Low goes on, trans women are women because women in a social category, not a biological one. No, but that's completely random and arbitrary. Who defines what social categories are? They are, I mean, when you put two things next to each other, and if they're the same in fundamental ways, then they belong in the same category for a particular purpose. Let's say the purpose is to identify different types of human beings. Well, all human beings, but different types of human beings. You put a man and a woman naked in front of you, they're different in fundamental, biologically fundamental ways. Fundamental biological ways that shape how they interact with reality, how they interact with other people. Trans women and cis women are, are different in fundamental, not in non-essential ways, but in fundamental ways that affect how people will interact with them, rationally interact with them for the utility, whether it's reproduction or whether it's just sex. But this whole idea of a, a, a social category, concepts are not social. They're not arbitrary. They're not whatever you feel like they should be. They relate to specific characteristics, specific facts in reality. And the, and, and the relationship to those facts, to you know, what you're trying to achieve. But so it's fascinating to me that people can think that trans women and cis women are in somehow the same category of woman. They're fundamentally different. And they're fundamentally different perceptually. So it's not hard. And, and the utility of it, it does not apply for everything. For some things, it doesn't matter. I don't care. If for some things, I do care. Right? For some things, I do care. For other things, I don't care. 
for their intellectual output, I don't care. Trans, cis, it doesn't matter. For sex, it very much matters. Very much matters. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.